in the docket, all I have listed for this story is USA, USA, <laughs> USA, uh, because you got, you might have heard um, the Sony PlayStation Five uh, received or is receiving, I should say, a price increase in pretty much every major country around the world, except <laughs> for the United <laughs> States of America, because yeah. we are apparently awesome. Or it's more to the point that the dollar is actually very strong right now compared to other currencies. And so the money that Sony is making for these consoles in the U.S. is going further. Um, and also they know that Americans are very loud and entitled and would get very upset if they <laughs> if, if they were to drop a price increase um, on us uh, yeah. a couple of years after the console came out. Um I I find this interesting because we are – this is really the first time that a console has ever increased in price. And Sony's blaming the, you know, the strains on the supply chain and the and massive inflation around the world and all these things as reasons that they need to increase the price on the console. Um, but this is uncharted waters. Like we've never seen this before. If anything, uh, consoles very exclusively go the other direction. Uh, in terms of pricing, um, Microsoft did announce that they're not doing anything with the pricing at this time of the Xbox consoles, which I'm not surprised. That would that's a very easy uh, layup for them to cash in on. It's just for to us, say, like, for yeah, that to just be like, we're not going to do. Yeah, that. Just, just keep it the same. Um, yeah. And Nintendo said the same thing, but I would argue that Nintendo has already uh, done a price increase on the Nintendo Switch when they were when they released the Switch OLED which was essentially the same console with a slightly better screen yet it cost $50 more than the Nintendo Switch did at launch and I don't know I don't know that it was a $50 improvement and it also came out what almost 5 years after the Switch came out Well yeah I guess so Yeah something like that the the original Switch dropped in 2017 yeah, yeah. So. so I I would I would argue that that is a Indeed, a price increase that they caught no flack for because they were doing it under the guise of a new uh, of a new console skew. A slightly new, slightly new model. Yes. Um, do you think we're going to see this more and more as time goes on, or do you just think, or do you think it's a moment in time uh, due to our current economic situation? I would consider this a moment in time, a bit of a band aid situation, um, given the current global economic situation that we find ourselves in. Um, uh, yeah, because despite what the people who put stickers on gas pumps want to believe, um, this is not an issue. Inflation is not an issue limited to the United States right now. <laughs> this is a global problem. Um, much like supply chain issues are a global problem. Um, so this is a big old global band aid to a big old global problem that Sony finds themselves in. So I, I do find it interesting because I do think that if. If they, if Sony did not feel pressured um, to reach a certain price point when the system released, I think they would have put the console out at six hundred dollars. And I think that they only yeah. did five hundred just because they knew they had to to stay competitive with Microsoft because they knew mm-hmm. that Microsoft was going to release, and Microsoft also has a much cheaper SKU on the market as well. Yeah. Um, in addition to this, I think that there uh, there is a new SKU coming out for PlayStation Five that just um, lowers the processing power. Um, they've actually mm-hmm. they've actually revised this uh, once before from the original PS Five model. Apparently, like when they first came out with the PS Five, they put too much power in it. Like they overcompensated just in case. And then I think they're finding out as they go along that like, Oh no, we're actually wasting a lot of resources by having all, all these, all these massive processors in here that we really don't need because the games don't need a processor this powerful. Um, And so basically I think the process uh, from the launch version, I think the processor has decreased in power by about 20%. Um, Yeah. I don't think that, I don't think that gamers are going to see a, you know, a real life, you know, impact from that. But from Sony, it allows them to, you know, buy cheaper processors and use smaller processors, which is saving them money on every PlayStation, which means they're making more profit considering they're selling it for more money than they were before. Yeah. So, yeah, just very interesting. Again, it's, this is very, very strange. Um, Not that we would see a price cut two years into a console's life cycle, but. I wasn't expecting to see a price cut on, um, 
on the PS5. Again, just really just two years into its life cycle. Um, I wasn't even expecting really like a updated, like a slimmer model Mm -hmm. anytime soon either. Um, So whatever, I've got one. So, (laughs) yeah. And that's Um, that's the other thing too. I think, I think the price increase is equivalent to about like $30 in most territories, give or take. mm -hmm. And so like, People are like, oh man, this is going to piss people off. It's going to push people toward Xbox. Look, if you're spending five hundred dollars or the or the regional equivalent on something, another thirty dollars is not going to make or break your, your no, decision. It's really not. No. Um. Yeah, I just, I don't know. Like it's it's weird. Again, this is very unprecedented, but I don't really think this is going to have a major impact on their sales. I feel like the people who still really want a PS5 are still going to be like. Okay, here's an extra $30. <laughs> like, you're watching the Dense Pixels YouTube channel? Click the subscribe button while you're here and make sure you check out our weekly podcast where we discuss the latest gaming news and our impressions on what games we've been playing.